Bach was born in 1685, died in 1750, which means that he lived the entire period of the Baroque. And the Baroque uh, was a time uh, of, of great art, very complex art, art of great structure, art of great detail. And Bach has become for us the epitome of the Baroque period. He was an organist, probably, not probably, surely the best organist of his time. Everybody knew about him who was in the musical world, but he lived in a very small area of Germany. Didn't travel very much like Handel traveled everywhere, like other composers, famous composers traveled and did things everywhere. Bach lived in a very small part, small radius of Germany. As a composer, he had everything. He had technique and he had emotion. He had the brain and he had the heart. His works encompassed every kind of music. Music for the harpsichord, for the lute, for the organ, music for the orchestra, music for the church. Most of his uh, output was in cantatas, which uh, were pieces that were sung on Sunday morning. He wrote three complete cycles of cantatas for the, the Lutheran liturgical year. And then he wrote massive works. And we have in our repertoire now three of these great masterpieces. The Two Passions, St. John Passion, the St. Matthew Passion, and the B Minor Mass. I want to say two things about the B Minor Mass. I could speak forever, but I will just say two things. First of all, there was no obligation for Bach to write the B Minor Mass. He wrote the St. Matthew Passion obligation. He had to do it on Good Friday. St. John Passion, St. Mark Passion, the cantatas he had to do every week. He was paid to do this work. He was paid to do almost everything. The Bach B minor mass, no one paid him. One centime. That says to me something very special. That at the end of his life, he wanted to finish this work. That he began at different periods in his life. He wanted to finish this work as either a thank you to God or as something for the future, I don't think so. I really think he had inside him a desire to do the highest work that he could do before he died. And this is the work. It is utter perfection. The other thing that I want to say is that while the Mass is a Christian piece of music. It comes out of the Catholic tradition. He was a Protestant, but he wanted to do this because the Mass is the most important piece of liturgy in Christian history. Even though it is a supremely religious work, Christian work, full of theology, full of symbolism, full of musical painting that comes from theological ideas. There is another dimension which I can sh share with everybody, whether you are Jew, whether you are Muslim, whether you are Hindu, whether you are agnostic, whether you are atheist, n'importe quoi, doesn't matter. There is something in this music that grabs you, everybody. It is universal music. Tonight, uh, I have the privilege of doing this piece in Notre Dame. What will I try to do? This piece is so complex. It demands so much concentration from everybody, of course from me. I will attempt to combine my head and my heart. My heart is in this music because I am a Christian. 
So I feel this music very deeply. It is what I believe. My first memories, my first recollections of music was of Bach. I can remember the first recording that I heard, Krislag in Todesbanden, cantata number four. I can sing it for you because it's in my memory, it's in my... When I started playing the piano, I had to play the well-tempered clavier. So all of that is in my fingers. Then I went to college and I sang for the first time the St. Matthew Passion. I thought I would die. I never heard music like this. When I went to the Juilliard School in New York, I sang in my first year, I sang the B minor mass, first time. I will never forget it. It was not a very good performance, but the music is the music. Then I had a life-changing experience. Maybe the single most important moment in my musical life was when I met a Bach musicologist by the name of Julius Herford, a German Jew who explained to me the meaning of the Saint, of the Johannes Passion, Saint John Passion. I spent hours and hours and hours with him studying the text, not the music, the text, the poetry, the chorale, the recitative, the story, all with a German Jew. And it changed my life because before that, music was for me notes, technique, dynamics, you know. But when I met this man, music became for me life. Life. It's an expression of life. And now I come to this moment where with my orchestra in Paris, in Notre Dame, in France, a French country, not a German country. This for me is a culmination of, uh, of my experience with Bach. When I first came to Paris to take the music directorship of this orchestra, one of my very first thoughts and hopes was to do these pieces in Notre Dame. How to do this? I had a friend, very close friend now, who introduced me to the Cardinal. At the time it was Cardinal Jean-Marie Lustiger. I had a wonderful encounter with him in which he received the idea of doing these pieces on a yearly basis at Holy Week in Notre Dame with excitement and he was very positive about it. When I first did the, I think it was the B minor mass, I shall never forget it because there I was before the altar looking at these incredible windows, looking at the paintings, looking at the statues, and looking at the pieta in front of me, and these my musicians in the chorus. I will never forget that moment. It was extraordinary. Tonight, of course, I will have something inside me of, of incredible ex excitement, the sense of privilege of doing this, not just for the public that is here, but doing it for a larger public in Europe and in the world, for that matter. It's a huge obligation, a huge responsibility, but an enormous, enormous privilege for me. So I will feel great. This is going to be a documentation of what we have done for the last eight years in Notre Dame. And that's all.